Wow, I've never had a stadium count me in entirely before. Hey, everybody, my name is Seltzer. I'm going to be your host for the panel today, and we are going to be taking a close look at Operation Void Edge. But before we do, here is a quick video showcasing Oryx, Yenna, and our new map rework, Oregon. A new force of destruction is coming to Rainbow Six Siege in Operation Void Edge, and his name is Oryx. He's a defender, and in addition to crashing through soft walls and sturdy Frenchmen, he can also perform other feats of athletic prowess. Then there's the new attacker, Yana. Don't be alarmed if you shoot her and she disappears. That's just her hologram that looks, moves, and sounds exactly like her. Okay, maybe that's a little alarming. Here's the rundown on the new operators and their gadgets, and a look at what they can do on the newly renovated Oregon map. Let's start with the new Jordanian defender, Oryx, because of the smashing. This is powered by his Rima Dash ability, a quick sprint that lets him move faster than any other operator. With it, he can knock attackers to the ground, including Montaigne and other shield bearers. He can also smash through barricades and unreinforced walls. Keep in mind that while barricades are a breeze, he does take some damage when crashing through a wall, so don't get too smash happy without a friendly dock nearby unless you want to end up losing a 1v1 to wood paneling. Oryx's dash runs on charges. He can use them rapidly to dash a few times in a row, but they take time to replenish, and they reset to zero when you bust through a wall. Gridlock's track stingers and Nomad's air jabs can interrupt his dash, and it takes a moment for him to get his gun back up after dashing. Plus, Oryx's footsteps aren't exactly subtle when he dashes. His ability is more about speed and strength. And he's got one more trick up his complete lack of sleeves. Oryx can jump up and grab open hatches, then either peek at his surroundings and drop down, or pull himself up through the hatch to the floor above. He can't do it on roof hatches, and you'll have to break open the hatch first. So choosing his SPAS-12 primary over his MP5, or his bailiff sidearm over his USP-40 isn't a bad idea. But his climbing ability is independent of his Rima Dash charges, so you can use these two skills in tandem. This makes Oryx a dangerous new defender who will have attackers looking over their shoulders and wondering where he'll show up next. Operation Void Edge is also bringing the attackers their own deceptive new threat, even though it's something that can't hurt the defenders at all. This is the new Dutch operator, Jana, and this is her hologram. Using her Gemini replicator gadget, Jana creates and controls a hologram that looks like her, including her headgear, uniform, and primary weapon skin. Moves like her, with the exception of rappelling or climbing ladders, and sounds like her. While it can't deal damage to enemies or physical objects, it can have serious effects on the defender's survivability. In addition to scouting traps, but not triggering them, Yana can make defenders think she is breathing down their necks and bait them into throwing their C4 or dupe Smoke or Goyo into triggering their gadgets prematurely. After all, when a defender sees the hologram peek around a corner or hears it in a hallway, how are they to know it's not the very real and very dangerous Yana? Convincing as it is, the hologram is fragile. One bullet will destroy it, as will electricity or mute jammers. Maestro's evil eyes can zap it as well, and they can detect it's a hologram by the telltale lack of warm body glow. Shooting Yana's hologram does not result in a location ping, as with Alibi's Prisma holograms, and it can't ping locations, scan enemies, or see Vigil when he's using his cloaking device. Plus, Yana can't move while her hologram is active, so defenders are temporarily safe from her ARX-200 or G36C primary weapon or her MK1 9mm sidearm. But she doesn't just have one hologram. The cooldown period is longer if it's destroyed than if she deactivates it, but her hologram will always recharge. 
Whether she's using it to run solo misdirection plays or conspiring with teammates in a coordinated push, Yana's deceptions can have deadly consequences. There used to be an exterior door here on the dining hall bomb site on the Oregon map, but it's been removed as part of some key renovations to rework the map. The nearby small office tower has been expanded on both levels, giving defenders more room to work with when keeping attackers at bay. The basement area has also grown, with the dorm stairs now extending down one level and connecting through a new freezer section to the old basement. Operators looking to traverse the attic connector above the meeting hall will have more options, including a redesigned floor plan near the master bedroom and a new exterior second floor window, but the ladder to the first floor has been removed. You'll also find a new hallway connecting the big tower directly to the kitchen, allowing you to bypass the meeting room entirely. Operation Void Edge is also bringing some impactful gameplay updates that you'll want to know about. Changes to barricade damage will make breaking boards more consistent and less obstructive. Attacker drones will now spawn on the same side of the building as the attacker's first spawn location choice. And the player hub will be revamped for improved navigation. These updates, as well as the Oregon map rework, will be free for all players when Operation Void Edge launches. The new operators, Oryx and Yana, will be available at launch for Year 5 Pass owners, and everyone else can unlock them a week later using Renown or R6 credits. For more on Rainbow Six Siege, subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com. Now that you've seen the video, let's talk with the developers who helped make it all happen. First up, I've got Matthew Laocom, our game designer. Matthew, what does it feel like to stand on this stage? I am so hyped. I'm really excited, and I hope that everybody out there is as excited as I do, because this one is going to be a blast. Absolutely. It's already been incredible, and we know how great Rainbow Six can be. Nicholas Jolik, you are our level designer. I saw you in Tokoname, but now you're here at the SI. How does it feel to stand on this stage now? It is great. I mean, we've been having some great games. The public is epic. Thank you all. You guys are beautiful. And now we have some really nice content to present to them. Absolutely. Let's start things off with the rework of Oregon. Now, what is it like for the team to rework a map like Oregon? Well, Oregon was a hell of a beast. Um, every time we go to work on a, new, on a rework, there's always this set of challenges. But with Oregon, it has a special place in our hearts, and same for the community. So I would be lying if I would say that working on that did not add an extra layer of pressure. Well, what did you guys decide needed to be fixed about Oregon? Right, well, Oregon's been here forever. It's one of the OG maps. It's been played in Pro League a lot. Um, and the uh, one of the first things that uh, we noticed is that after all this time, the players kind of figured out the map. Mm. It's been kind of played out. So one of our first missions was to go back in there and uh, shuffle it around, freshen it up, but keep, keep its essence. So uh, no more Borgon? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> players started to call it Borgon, but that's why we went in to make it great again. Well, you guys did a, a top-down overhaul of the map, so let's start from the bottom up. Basement, what did you change? Right, so basement is probably where we've made the most changes. So if you would start off um, inside of where you would go into small tower, follow the hallway, get to white stairs, you'll figure out that under those stairs is a whole new flight of stairs going to basement. And once you go down there, you end up in the freezer zone, which is right next to a uh, breakable wall, which will uh, then take you to the objective. Now that adds a whole new possibility for the attackers to come up with new strategies. For defenders, it's a whole new rotation, but they will have to figure out new ways to use their resources to keep it safe. And uh, I heard you guys changed some things up with the blue bunker as well. What happened there? Yes, so on blue bunker, what uh, happened is that when you would get in, you kind of had only one possibility, just go straight. So we added also another uh, hallway there, so now, now attackers will be able to add more pressure to the objective as well. All right, what about the delicious cream center of the house, that first floor, what did you change? Right, so on the first floor, um, the, I'd say the 
what, where things weren't going too well was the big tower objective. Ah. Now, it was known to be the weakest one. Uh, I mean, it was pretty much a three-step win for the attackers. I mean, pop in some smoke, send Maltang, drop the diffuser right after him, back up, and profit. Y you make it sound so easy. Well, all right, fine. It's not that <laughs> easy, but it's not that interesting either. So what we wanted to do is we took the objective and we moved it. So now the new objective is meeting and kitchen. People like that, great. Oh, they liked it. You got anything else you changed on first floor? Well, uh, the thing is, as you guys probably uh, notice, kitchen is now a shared objective, like we did in cafe. And but the thing is, beer is assured. Uh, they play completely differently. Oh well, very interesting. How about the second floor? You want to tell us about that? Uh, yes. Well, on the second floor, we have made some changes, uh, but we're going to let the. Uh, players go in there and figure it out for themselves. But we did forget one thing, though. On the first floor, again, there's a lot of changes that we did, uh, more changes that we did. Uh, we noticed that we really enjoyed the flow in uh, Oregon. Interesting. But there were some places where we felt it was a little too choky. It were missing uh, some natural paths. So from meeting to kitchen, you'll see there's a new hallway, which for the defenders helps them move around much better. Um, for the attackers, there's also an entry at that, at that spot. And in Small Tower, uh, we've moved around the rooms. We've added a new hallway now also. So you get much more possibilities when you attack at that spot, which makes it much more fun. All right, so new name for it, uh, refresh a gun, excite a gun. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'll let you guys brainstorm that one. But thank you so much, Nicholas, for taking us through that. We're gonna check in with you later on today. We've got a little bit of a thing that we do at the end of these announcements, so I'll let you handle that in a bit. But for now, Matthew Lalcombe, you have brought us two new operators. Now, the community got a look at Oryx earlier on this week, and they loved him, yeah? I think they want to know a little bit more about him. Well, this guy is super impressive. You see him, he got this physique, but we do not know a lot about this guy. He went off the grid for 15 years. Uh, he did completely disappeared. Uh, but we do know some few key points for, about him. He's a pretty good marksman. Uh, he, do, he does some tactical driving. He's well-versed in martial arts, and he comes from Jordan. And how did he get involved in Rainbow Six? Well, he showed up in front of Kaid's fortress. Uh, he wanted to get in there and get some directions. Yeah. So, but Cade being the man that he is, he made him wait, wait a couple of weeks outside, test his resolve and see how how he is. The long game. Exactly. And he finally took him in as a cadet and he quickly grew up in ranks and became his second tro uh, most trusted uh, advisor. Well, he seems like a great pickup. Uh, tell me what he brings to the table as an operator. He brings in the Ramadash. Uh, as you can see, it's an, ab an ability, just like Kavira. It's not a gadget uh, a tool that you use. The Ramadash has three noticeable use. The first one is a quick dash forward, which is the bread and butter of the ability. The second part is going through soft surfaces. It allows him to create some rotation holes and new paths to you could get in the way of the attackers. The third part is actually climbing up the hatches, a bit similar to what we have with Amaru. But this time, he can actually hang around, peek, notice, uh, check if it's safe, and go up uh, on the floor above. Yeah, he really treats the map like his playground. He can bust through whatever he wants. He has fun all over the different levels. So what was the, the thought behind adding an operator who can do what Oryx can do? Exactly. It's been a while since we did a proper roamer. So we brought him all the tools he needs to be a pain for the attacker. So he, everything about him is, all, is about the ruthless aggression just moving around the map and being in your face. So he definitely wanted to get a new roamer in there. Let's take um, maybe a look at his loadout next and uh, tell me what you thought to add with him. Uh, Oryx is a two-speed, two-armor operator. He brings in the Spass 12, which is super great if you want to be in your face with the attackers. Or you got the MP5, which is more reliable for mid-range, but he does not bring an ACOG with, uh, with his MP5. On the secondary part of his uh, weapons, we got the Bailiff Fortem, which is super useful if you want to open the hatches and make use of the ability. Or you got the USP40, which is more about reliability. Well, and tell me a little bit about his secondary gadgets here as well. We, like we said, we wanted a uh, roamer, so we br uh, brought him the barbed wires, which is super great to have sound cues and slowing down the attackers. Or we have the uh, bulletproof cam that is really good to know if you can actually go up of a, a level. Well, this is a really nice kit, a very strong looking operator. So I'm wondering uh, what is going to counter 
an operator like Oryx? Uh, since he's a roamer, you want to bring tools that is really good uh, at stopping roamers. So first of all, we got gridlock. Not only it's good to cut off rotations, but it will stop him in his tracks. It will completely stop the dash, and it will stop him there. The second good counter that you can bring is Lion. The EE1D will spot him when he dashes around because it's a move. And the third one would be the air jab. When he dashes forward, it will get interrupted and push back with the air jab. And who's Oryx going to be a, a really strong pick against? Well, there's something I didn't mention about the, um, the Remadash. It's it, uh, actually pretty good at pushing back uh, attackers if it uh, bumps into them. So it will also include shield operators and fully extended Montang. So no longer you will be stuck in a 1v1 with a Montang that looks at you and Look, it said the diffuser being diffused. Yeah, you're going to knock him right on his butt. Exactly. Well, we've talked about the brawn of the operations. Now let's talk about the brains you're adding. Yena has a very interesting backstory. Tell me a little bit about her. We have quite the dreamer over here. Not only she's a dreamer, but she acts upon to make them reality. Uh, from the youngest of age, she looked up at the stars and from their home of the Nether uh, the Netherlands. Uh, she studied aerospace engineering and this led her into a trip into the International Space Station. When she came back, well, she wanted more. She wanted to get out there again. So she devised a tool that she calls the Gemini Replicator. Right, she created this amazing tool so she could project herself to the moons of Neptune and continue her scientific exploration. But her tool of science has now become a tool of violence. How do we use the Jedi, uh, Gemini Replicator in battle? The Gemini Replicator is in a, in a gadget that allows to gather information at the same height level as an operator. So it's really valuable information that is more interesting than a drone. So this ability will create an hologram that looks exactly like Yana. So be it uh, uniforms, headgear, loadouts, customization, everything will be replicated. We want to make sure that you can actually fool the defenders too. So when I have a, a sweet skin on, that's going to be replicated. Exactly, everything. We want to make sure that you fool the defender. So sounds, motions, everything, everything is just like an operator. So what's the design intention, uh, intentionality behind an ability like this? We wanted to create a new observation tool that was more than the drone. But being the drone, the, the drones are really useful right now. So we had to add more layers to it. So we created this hologram, and everyone just felt like it it was a perfect period, so everyone got behind and it created a lot of team plays. So we just went full on ahead with this and make sure that it's a good tool to fool the operator, uh, the defenders, and a good uh, observation tool. Yeah, and you get a, a perspective on the situation from eye level when you go into it as well with your clone. Exactly. It's, it's information that you can use that is even more useful than a, a drone. So when she's not controlling her clone, what else does Yen have available to her? We got two assault rifles. We got the ARX 200 with a um, bit of spice added to it. We added the uh, vertical grip to it. And the second option, if you've played Hash before, well, you know that the G36C is a pretty good weapon. So we got those two assault rifles out there. And she's got, I see here, a smoke grenade and a frag grenade. Cool. Yeah, exactly. We got the pretty loaded section over here. Uh, over here, we want to make sure that you make use of the ability of the Gemini Replicator. So the small grenade will create natural team plays. So being allowed to fool the defenders and create situation that the attackers can. Um, yeah, really play off that. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. And the frag grenades is really to make sure that you can go forward and go on navigating. So removing those evil eyes and stuff like that. How do I how do I even conceptualize playing against an operator that can be in two places at once? We got two passive uh, counters for it. We first of all we got the mute. Uh, the first range of the mute jammer will reveal to everyone that it's not the real Yana, so it will start to flicker. And if a Yana goes on and enters the second range of the mute jammer, it will get destroyed. The second passive ga counter that we have is electricity. Uh, the hologram is super fragile, so any damage will destroy it. Uh, so leave barbed wires electrified on the floor and she won't be able to go through. And since the hologram cannot deal any damage, it won't be able to destroy barricades or go through castle barricades. So it will stop the navigation there. That's a full-on wall for her. Exactly. Fantastic. Um, anything else we're missing about? Yeah, no, we really covered a lot here. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think the rest is going to be up for the community to get her in their hands. Oryx as well, and that's going to be on February 17th. You guys can play these operators. Now, oh, we're not done, folks. <laughs>
In addition to two brand new operators, you've gone back and taken some, some tweaks on some old operators. There was one that was giving attackers a lot of trouble. Um, tell me about the changes that you've made to Legion. We've made two changes to Legion. The first change is removing his ability to gather information from across the map. So you will need line of sight to gather, to see those icons across the map. The second part of the, um, of the tweak is removing the initial damage. So if you're doing 1v1 against uh, uh, Legion, well, you won't get stopped by stepping on a goo mine and, well, fluking your, uh, your clutch. You've, you've made the people very happy, man. Yeah, it's <laughs> cool. Now, uh, as I understand it, you've also made a couple changes, uh, little tweaks to Twitch as well. Yes, um, Twitch has always been about the F2, so we wanted to bring more utility to the Twitch drone. We are making the ammo system similar to what we have on the Yokai drone. So you will start with uh, three shots, and they will regenerate over time. We want to make sure that you use the drone, do some activities, zap some gadgets, go back to your Twitch view, profit uh, over this, uh, those actions, and use the, the newly generated shots from your Twitch room. They sound like some really thoughtful balance changes that you guys have made to existing operators. And in addition to some balance changes, you guys have done some quality of life updates as well. This one got a lot of applause in the video. I know you guys are excited for debris replication. Tell me a little bit about what the issue was and how you guys are going to fix it. So yeah, for the longest of time, we've tried to be super realistic about planks get, getting destroyed, so we would remove one plank at a time. Sometime they would get stuck and lead to unfair fi uh, fair fi uh, firefights. So what we are doing is removing 90% of the uh, of the plank. It's going out in debris and particles that won't stay there. But we are also leaving one small part of the wood to leave feedback on the other side that barricade was destroyed. Fantastic. Glad to hear it. Now, uh, we're also seeing a change to drone spawns. Tell me about how this is going to affect players. Yes, so when you are in your planning phase and you're selecting your spawn point, well, the drone will sp start exactly where you selected. Oh, right in front of me. Yeah, exactly. If you want to spawn there, drone will spawn there. Whatever I want, you guys are the best. <laughs> I saw you made a little aesthetic change as well to the player hub. Tell me about the update. So we changed the play section to be more rainbow. As you can see, it's more, yeah. it's more rainbow six. Absolutely. But we are also bringing more information to the players. If you want to know all the details about the playlist, well, everything is going to be exposed. If you want to know if it's five second diffuse, five second planting the diffuser, everything is going to be showed up there. Beautiful. You have set the table, and we are ready to feast. But we have one more piece de resistance. And Nicholas, I'm going to tee you up here and let you share it with the people. Yeah, I love this part. So I'm happy to announce that this season, our sneakiest operator, Kivera, will be getting her own elite skin. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Matsu, for coming out here, for breaking this all down. For us, Operation Void Edge is going to be available on the test servers on February 17th. Now, tomorrow, we are going to be showcasing all to come from the content and esports team with our Year 5 panel. But don't go anywhere yet. Our next match here at SI is about to begin between Space Station Gaming and TSM. But before we get there, folks, we have community commendations. And they're going to be for Mero Katsune, our wonderful content creator, and for Karen, one of our community moderators. So let's check it out. <laughs> 